Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, I had a fantastic weekend and I cannot wait to tell you all about it. I'm Peel. And I'm Travis, and this is the Travis and Peel Show. All right, man, tell me about this weekend. Hey, Travis. Uh, first off, you know that I'm over here in New Orleans, and uh, there's something we like to do when uh, when January, February starts to roll in. We get this season that slowly Parades. starts to pick up. Parades. Yeah, that's not happening this year. Booze. Um, <laughs> but we get this thing that happens usually around March, but it becomes available in February. So I got to ask you, do you like crawfish? My friend, uh, I like you. Was uh, we had our formative years on the Gulf Coast, and uh, you do not get out of those years without a a fond taste of crawfish. So yes, 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 yes. I I, I love crawfish very much. And uh, and how's the crawfish out there in LA? In LA. In LA, like in LA, like literally, like the crawfish, like ah, uh, yeah. It's uh, so ironically, there is one place that actually does a decent. Uh, pot of crawfish called the boiling crab. Shout out to the boiling crab. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's it's not bad. Like they don't make it with zatarans or anything good like that. But it's it's enough to where I have a craving. It fits the craving. Like it, it takes care of it for me. So I can get it. It's even if you get like the cheap frozen stuff. It's nine dollars a pound when it's in season. It's around like fourteen dollars a pound. So it's like ridiculous. Oh, it's ridiculous. Is this like a tofu, tofu soy uh, avocado crawfish? It is uh, not. It's just crawfish, crawfish. It just happens to be um, mega expensive. Yeah, and it's, it's right, well, and it's and it's from Texas. It's farmed, uh, so it's not like wild caught from the Gulf. It is a different breed of crawfish, but it's good enough for that inkling. Right. Yeah. Well, just so you know, this weekend, uh, since I didn't do good. Did not get to do it last year uh, with obviously COVID and everything going on. It's a tradition that, you know, friends and I usually always get together, families, everything, come together and do a crawfish boil. Uh, And I went ahead and just did it this weekend. I did not Mm. care. I said, you know what? Didn't get to do it last year. They're available right now. It's early in the season, but we're making this happen. It's probably some of the most money I paid for crawfish. Uh, (laughs) But we did. We, we, We said you know about everything we're going to do this this year and we're going to gather everybody up um my my birthday is right here i had another friend's birthday uh it's just you know everybody gathering together and having a good time um obviously we limited the party size but still we 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 had to do this so we did and we had a crawfish boil and i went ahead and documented it you did i went ahead and documented it you Mm -hmm. did um so you want to check that out uh, yeah, we're definitely going to check this out. Um, I would just like to uh, reference this since you said it was crawfish we're from Texas. Uh, we're going to do this more of a uh, Gulf Coast, you know, New Orleans, Mississippi-based uh, uh, crawfish boil. Um, you get outside of the Golden Triangle of uh, of Texas, and crawfish is garbage, okay? Yeah. They do not know what they're doing. Yeah. Just letting everybody know, uh, after living in Houston for several years, I was horrified and all the crawfish. Got, I was so excited. Like, oh, we got crawfish. I was like, oh, it's Texas has crawfish. Of course, they should. Hmm. Went there was not a fan mm. um but we'll get into that later about the different complexities of crawfish in different regions and how everybody does it but this is how we do it and i'm going to take you through this uh, a little bit step by step so here we go and i have questions so i'm excited for this because uh I, i've oh, grown yeah, up man. i've grown up uh personally seeing like grandparents and my my dad and everybody making like their own version of crawfish and this is one of those things where crawfish is one of the things where everybody has their own way right there is no yeah. two exact ways and that's what's great about crawfish like you can go like have three crawfish boils in a row at three different locations and you're gonna have three separate different experiences except for the ultimate experience which is everybody congregating around like three or four tables slapped together with crawfish littering literally littering the table and it's everybody just like drinking beer in one hand crawfish in the other and like like you're wiping snot and you got like dirty ass. Yeah. It's, it's the most unflattering meal you'll, uh, you'll ever have in your life. Um, but but it, it is delicious. There's something about the camaraderie of everybody just slurping and sucking their way through a, like 
40 pounds of crawfish in like 20 minutes or less. Like it doesn't take long for Are we talking about herogasm again? Yeah. Oh yeah. That that's a, uh, I'm, I'm still excited about that. But anyway, uh, let, yeah. let's jump into this. Cause like I said, I had a lot of, a bunch of questions. I had, I, I was madly jealous when you, when you said you were going to do this, I went to the boiling crab, got me about four pounds and, mm-hmm. uh, I was there in spirit. I was there in spirit. Yeah, eating this, away. Was, uh, this was, this was, kind of impromptu. We just mentioned it. Uh, we mm-hmm. looked at prices around the area. We found some. So here is, uh, we're going to start off right now. We're going to go ahead and go through the story. I'm going to commentate it for you uh, and let you kind of know what we're doing, some of the things that we used. Um, once again, big shout out. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, John. Uh, Vic, everybody came over, everybody who was a part of this process, everybody got everything that we needed. I really you guys thank are you. heroes. Uh, and yeah, friend Patrick Doyle, uh, you know, Laura, uh, everybody who came in and, and made this happen. I, I am so happy they're about to come in. Uh, thank you, Sandra. This, you know, real list of everybody who was there and of course myself. Uh, so it was a fun time. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and without further ado, uh, let's get into the boil. All right, so we are starting off here in the purple sack, uh, 40 pounds of delicious Louisiana fresh live crawfish. Hey, it's you. This handsome gentleman. Oh yeah, it is. I'm on TV, mom. <laughs> um, opening up the sack, of course, the first thing you gotta do is um, open the sack. And then once you open that sack, you're gonna have to get it ready to purge. And purging um, is going to be the process of uh, soaking the crawfish. And of course, I'm ready. Mm-hmm. See, this guy knows what's up. He's done this before. <laughs> so we get him in this nice bucket and you want to get everything ready because all those suckers are squiggling and moving around, you know, and they're dirty. They are called mud bugs. They're and that's reason. why you purge them, right? So because get, they're dirty, you got to kind of like clean them out so they're healthy to eat. Definitely. You got to get them cleaned off and you want to get them um, to kind of exit from both ends. You want to get them uh, to, to get at a purge everything out of their system. Uh, so what you do is you're going to get, you know, big tub or ice chest, get it full of water and let it run over them. Uh, of course, the crawfishes aren't seeing them pop around when these aren't doing this and they get really freaky. Do not eat them live. They are no. not delicious. <laughs> no. Uh, so after you get them purged, they they get every day, they get rid of everything and everything's cleaned out and it cleans out, makes it a lot, uh, you know, more palatable. Uh, you know, crawfish. So we gather up all of our ingredients, of course, here. And I'm going to pause see, here um, so we can kind of like take our time and go through these ingredients and stuff. Oh, yeah. Take a look at this real quick. You know, um, as you see right here, you got some of the base ingredients. You got to have your garlic. You got to have your potatoes. You can do red potatoes. You can do golden potatoes. You can put finger lean potatoes. You can put mm-hmm. sweet potatoes. You can add any kind of potato you want, but you got to get them potatoes in there, mm-hmm. right? Get them taters. Got to get your taters. Uh, My you grandpa. Have- so a couple of things that I saw here. One was the the oranges. I've never seen oranges mm-hmm. In a, uh, in a pot of crawfish before, and I immediately thought that was brilliant. Something my grandfather used to add uh, once, or no, it wasn't my grandfather, it was an uncle that I used to add was uh, bell pepper, multicolored bell pepper, oh, yeah. and throw them in there, and it was delicious and everything. So oh, yeah. recommend that. Pretty much anything you want to put in the boil, you can. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, we, we've done it, and we swap it up. We put Brussels sprouts, artichokes, mm-hmm. um, pineapples, mm-hmm. uh, like a bunch of different things we put in there, and it just adds to the flavors. This is our tried and true, and hopefully I'm going to do some other videos and show you adding um, the different components in there and how they change the, flu- the flavor profile uh, of your boil. You also had mushrooms in there later in the video. We'll see that. It's not on the yes, table, sir. but that looked delicious. That was another thing oh, that yeah. I've not oh. seen in there before. The Mushrooms are 100% must. If I go to a boil and there's not mushrooms in there, somebody's getting hit yeah. because I don't see how you do it without it. <laughs> I'm going to hit um, them on a the broad side with a sack of crawfish. Yeah, there, well, there's some other things in here that you don't see as well. We got the celery that's not in there. We got the mushrooms. Um, as you're going to see later in the video, we're going to have some beautiful smoked sausage. Um, and then, of course, you're going to have your powdered boil. You're going to have your liquid boil. You're going to have your garlic powder, your celery salt, Worcestershire yep. sauce, uh, Louisiana hot sauce, or uh, Tabasco sauce, or whatever kind of hot sauce you really want to do. But the mm-hmm. Louisiana hot sauce um, has a nice uh, uh, you know, thickness to it and, and a flavor profile that blends in really well with all the boil materials. Uh, and, of course, you want to get your some uh, Zatarain's crawfish fish boil sacks um and everything actually we have here pretty much is zatarans hashtag zatarans shout out and if you know you want hashtag to support the show have us do some zaddies what up baby oh, your boy the rooms um but yeah so this is all the base ingredients and of course your citrus lemons oranges whatever you want to put in there with that that acidity helps bring out more mm-hmm. flavor inside the meat of the crawfish and of course you know the other ingredients that you put in there it all blends together in this beautiful melody of a just bouquet, flavor explosions if you will. in your mouth it is is a Zatarain's flavor bouquet. <laughs> <laughs> All right, shall we? Uh, yeah, we shall. 
So as we take that little panned out shot, looking at all of our ingredients, getting ready to uh, start prepping uh, what we need to have easily accessible at the boil, because you want to have everything easily accessible. So we're going to go through the items bit by bit. Um, I do leave some of the garlic whole, but I do like to open them up so that flavor really does seep into the boil and you get some of that loose garlic in there. And oh my God, when you get those beautiful uh, cloves of it, 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 it so much flavor, so great. Um, onions, you know, go ahead and pop them open. Leave the skin on, doesn't matter. It's all gonna be in there. You're not really eating these, you're gonna use them for flavor. Same thing with the red potatoes. Uh, depending on size, you don't have to cut them. You can go ahead and leave them as they are. And then of course your lemons, you wanna go ahead and get those halved because before you drop them in the bowl, you are gonna give them a good squeeze to get those juices mixed in with all the water. And then of course, smoked sausage. This is one of the bad boys right here. Uh, this is fantastic. This is delicious. One of my favorite part of every boil that I do is like the sausage. Like mm -hmm. I almost love this more than the actual crawfish themselves. And you wanna Same give here. them some nice bite-sized pieces and then some big chunks in there too. Uh, just so you can enjoy them during your meal. And of course, you get all the ingredients. You want to kind of lay them out and get them all over the place. Like I said, you're going to be dropping these into the boil. So you want easy access to it. And the easier it is to just dump in the water, the better. And that way you're not having to you know, keep track of where everything is at and have it all set out on the table next to your boiling pot. That's one of the other big things coming up. So yeah, I wanted to pause it right here as well because there were a, a quite a few boils that you put in there. Now, um, some people use like one boil <laughs> like a whole bunch of like the big gallons on the top right hand side there, you're going to see like the big like shrimp and crab well, boil liquid. and everything like the liquid boil. And some people just use a lot of that, but I've seen a lot here that you've used on all the Zataran product. There's one, you have, you have a regular crab boil, spicy crab boil, which I think was a brilliant mm -hmm. move there because that stuff's really, really good. I've never seen that pro boil. What is that and why did you put that in there? The the pro boil um, is just a refined uh, series of flavors and ingredients that they mm -hmm. put in their boiled powders um, and you want that mixture of the actual powder and the liquid uh, the powder will eventually dissolve but it's going to dissolve into the food that you're boiling uh, and the liquid is too it's just two flavor profiles you I mean if you're literally take like a teaspoon of the liquid boil and taste it you're going to get that spice to it you're going to get all those flavors but if you were to like you know dab your finger into the the powder boil, it's gonna have a different flavor profile as well just like the extra spicy boil mm -hmm. and the pro boil everyone adds a different batch of flavors gotcha. uh, so you use all the ones to get the different little complexities and of course we have a ratio that we use for each one um which maybe soon might you know put this down uh any you know in the comments and let everybody else try this at home yeah, and you can sure. do this crawfish shrimp crab whatever you want to do uh a boil's a boil and the big thing about it is just you know gathering your friends around and enjoying some hella good food yep absolutely Oh man, just everything is so, you gotta buy everything nice and fresh too. You don't want anything frozen except for your corn, which we'll get to that in a minute. Hey, looks As like you're uh, ready. Here. Yeah, they're soaking, they got purged out, they've been throwing up, you rinse them off again. Um, and generally when you're purging, it's only gonna be maybe like 30 minutes altogether of doing three cycles of doing the water. Um, and then of course you get your tank ready, make sure you have your propane connected safely. You wanna you know, get under there, get that light. One of my favorite sounds is coming up once this bad boy gets lit. Mm. Uh, hear that. Fill your, uh, you're still filling your tank up, of course, you know, got a thermometer in there. Boiling point is, you know, 212 Fahrenheit is where you're going to start boiling. You want to get your potatoes in first, especially the larger ones. And then you add all your other ingredients for the batch. It looks so like you, you had, have everything in there, like, mushrooms, sausage, citrus. Looks like you had the garlic in there very in the very beginning, right? Like you had the garlic cooking. Oh, no, that, that was potatoes in the bottom. Oh, those were potatoes in the bottom. Okay, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, those were the big potatoes. You got to put those in first. And it's, sometimes when you do fill up, you're going to have to take some of the water out. Right. Um, because you're about to dump in a whole bunch of crawfish, so that, that volume isn't going to last inside your pot. It's going to spill over. So sometimes you have to add some of that out, save it off to the side because usually, and most boils, it's not just one time. It's going to be two, maybe three batches that you're going to do depending on the size of your pot, how many pounds of crawfish that you're buying. Hmm. Now you mentioned like corn, uh, like being added a little bit later. So it, not everything is in the pot exactly. But of course the crawfish is coming, but like you, you left the corn out. Is that because it could cook like it could cook the, too the much? The corn is, is frozen mm -hmm. and it is in the freezer still, even at this moment, we haven't even pulled it out yet. Gotcha. Um, that's because the frozen corn is pretty much, you know, already good to go for the most part. Like if you just took it out, put it in the microwave, boom, you have frozen, you know, your corn's done. Mm -hmm. um, but there's a, there's a rhyme and a reason to this. And the, but right now in the pot, 
we have all the boils. So we have all the powders, all of that kind of stuff, all the garlic salt, the Worcestershire, uh, everything like that, according to our you know recipe ratio. We put in our onions, potatoes, garlic, mushrooms, celery. Uh, like I said, all of our citrus is in there, the, uh, the sausage. So everything is in there. Like I said, large potatoes first, mm -hmm. after about five minutes of cooking, maybe 10, go ahead and put everything else in. And how long do you keep everything else in there with the boil before you get to this point where you're about to add the crawfish? How long? Okay. So once we got everything in that pot, we covered it and brought it up to a boil. And once that bad boy gets to a boil, your bugs are ready to go in. Mm. And like I said, after we saw everything, we're like, okay, we're going to take out some water because this is going to spill everywhere. So we're removing some of that water for the volume purposes. And now we're about to drop half of our 40 pound sack inside the pot. And there we go. Oh, oh, poor little guys. Mm. We get about half that sack in there. And as soon as they hit that water, they start cooking it. Cause you're going to see, I'm going to drop the paddle in and you're going to see all of them start turning red from that dark brownish black color. The ones that pop up, boom, they're instantly cooking right there. Cause that bottle, the water is boiling. Like I said, over 212 degrees right now. And everything's just getting pushed to the bottom, mixed around all those flavors going, put the lid back on, let it cook about 10 minutes or bring it back up to a boil. Take the lid off, kill your propane. Everything's cooking right there. Once you get your propane killed, drop your corn in, frozen. This is part of the shocking process. Now, I'm gonna explain shocking in a second because there's more to it besides just adding the corn. You wanna get that corn in, push it down, mix it up. Now, before we get to shocking, um, so just to reiterate, so you when you dump the crawfish in there, the crawfish only need like two minutes tops. And like boiling, right? Like after, cause after that, like ten. they don't need to be. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's usually in the pot about 10 minutes. We have that crawfish, the temperature drops down about 10 minutes later, it's boiling. And that's all you need. You need to okay. bring it back up to a boil and then you kill the propane. And then kill the propane after it comes back to a yeah. boil. And then it soaks. Yep. Instantly how, kill the propane. How long do you keep the crawfish soaking in there after you kill the propane? Cause like, okay, so like keep... doesn't the, the thought process to me is the longer it's in there, the more flavor it will get. Exactly. Right. Um, so what you do is, but you also don't want to overcook it because if you overcook it, then it's going to be really hard to take it out of the shells. Mm -hmm. uh, you're not going to be able to peel it as easily. You're going to have ripped, you know, it's just the whole crappy thing. Gotcha. So once you get that back to the boiling point, they're cooked. You I mean, you can eat them right there. Mm -hmm. But the big thing about any boil is going to be the flavor and getting them to absorb that. Mm -hmm. So they just went from the super high heat. And the first thing we're going to do, take, take the heat away, flame is gone, and now we're adding our frozen corn. And then we're going to drop a bag of ice inside of this to bring the temperature down rapidly. When that happens, the, the crawfish are not cooking anymore. They're now just sitting in the water. Oh, look at that. It's a, we call that a Cajun waterfall right there. <laughs> you get all the drippings coming down. That ice is cooling off everything inside that pot right now. So the crawfish are no longer cooking because we brought them below 150 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so when that happens, they're no longer cooking, they're just sitting in the water. And you want that to happen for about 20 minutes or until they quit floating. Mm. That's the big thing. Once they sink to that bottom, that means they're they're absorbed. Because when I mean, heat happens, you know, the, the meat proteins expand and then when you shock them and they cool down rapidly, they close and they absorb in everything that comes into it, which gives it all that flavor. I love the scientific That's way science. you're going to, yeah, I love it, man. It's so good. You, you explain it really well. Oh, all right, best then part. You take them out. You pour them on the table, man. This is what you call the money shot. Mm. This is when everybody's favorite part of the day, everything is getting dropped onto the table. You see the corn, you see the potatoes, the onions, the garlic, the crawfish, the Woo. sausage. Oh, and then everybody just digs in. You gather around uh, and everybody just starts going at it. The trays are a big help for collecting all your crawfish pieces. I mean, people have specialized tables made. Mm -hmm. uh, like it, it's a whole epic deal, you know? Yeah, I've seen area. them with the holes and in them and they, just, they have uh, garbage cans mm -hmm. like under the tables. Like yep. you just throw them in a hole. Yeah, I've seen it before. Yeah, it is awesome. And everybody's happy, man. Oh, oh it's such a happy time. Happy customer. Another happy customer. He can't even talk. He's just putting food in his mouth. <laughs> Everybody's just getting down. Look, you just tear it up, man. It's quiet Sometimes time, it's man. It's a race to see how many you can do. Oh, yeah. this is It's quiet When you time. don't hear anybody talking, that's when you know you did it right. And then when you see everybody, like I said, wiping that <laughs> snot from their nose, you got you got sweat on the brow. And, you know, it, it's it's amazing. It's, it's such a fun time. It's a great experience. And the best part about it is how good the boil was. And that was the first one of the year. Um, didn't get to do one last year once again, but... 
it was fantastic. Didn't lose my touch. Definitely made some notes of some other things that I want to do. Because like I said, you can put anything in this pot. And as long as you do it correctly with the right amount of spices, the right timing, the right heat, um, and the right amount of love, it's going to come out wonderful. Sounds good. Sounds delicious, man. Uh, so overall, you're pretty, pretty happy, pretty pleased. Oh man, I was happy. Everybody else was happy. After this, we all just sat back and we couldn't move, uh, but we did another batch. So that was just the first half. Then we did another half, mm -hmm. man. But I was, I was really happy in everybody that limited amount of people, 40 pounds. Only thing we had left was like half a tray of, of the crawfish. So we're peeling those today mm. and we're going to use that and uh, we're going to put some like etouffee. But uh, Laura came up with this great idea. She's like, hey, how about we make burritos? Hi, so Laura. we cut up the uh, potatoes in there. Uh, we took a piece, a piece of the crawfish. We took off the corn from the uh, uh, from the corn on the cob. We chopped up sausage and everything, put it in a tortilla, wrapped it up and made a Cajun boil burrito. And dude, it was awesome. It was, awesome. it was fantastic. Oh, man, it was great. so good. Uh, can't wait for the next one. Uh, are you going to come? Uh, you know what, if COVID can get, if COVID can somehow get under control or I could get my vaccine, I would come. I would, I'd take a flight for sure. But the, but the biggest thing, like I mentioned before, is usually it, it's about being with friends and family um, and just enjoying good food, good drinks, and good times. That's the best part about this, and that's what I love about it. And um, if you ever need uh, any advice or help on uh, how to do a boil, like I said, please uh, comment and uh, let me know. Like I said, hopefully we're going to get that recipe down there for you soon. Um, so so thank you so much. We're, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or if you have things that you do in your boils, you know, even if it's a crab boil, if it's, you know, a uh, shrimp boil, uh, please let us know. All you, you know, Northeasterners and everything, I know how you like to do your boils up there too so uh different regions and everybody does things differently and this is how we like to do it here uh so hopefully we get some uh feedback from everybody um make sure you like share subscribe and uh we'd love to hear your input on what you thought about this and uh if you want to be a part of the next one too hey peel hey travis i uh never ask this i never ask anything of you for christmas i never <laughs> ask anything of you for my birthday Usually and your I presence you anything. Usually your presence is enough. That's fine. Your presence is good I mean, I in replacement that. of presence. But I need you to do one thing for me this year. Just one thing. I need you to ask these fools. I'm these trying. fools. To like, share, and subscribe. Please. That's all I want. That's all I want. Hey. If you can, for Travis. Like, share, subscribe.